G'day. Today we're going to talk a little bit about starting systems. Why? Well, just for a bit of fun really. Now, as cars get older, some of the systems in the car get a little bit laggy or tired. This can be due to old wiring or loose connections or dirty terminals or anything really. So, this can cause a lot of different problems. Older cars, the starter, work directly from the ignition barrel straight down to the starter solenoid. And as these systems get older, sometimes they just suffer from voltage drop and they won't kick that solenoid in properly. Especially if your car's automatic, because sometimes that voltage has to travel all the way through the inhibitor switch as well, giving it even more chance of voltage drop. What can be the symptoms of this? Well, check this out. Say you're all G'd up to go out in the town, right? So you jump in your old car, try and give it a start, and all you get is this. Ignition comes on, and you think, yeah, sweet, we're going out. All you get is this, no go. She wants to go, but she just won't. Very frustrating. Let's see what we can do about it. Alright, so we can see how annoying that can be. What's the solution? Well, it could be just as simple as adding a little relay. Now, relays come in all sorts of forms and sizes and shapes. If you've got some old wiring at home, you've probably got some of these to spare. If not, they're available for under 10 bucks at your local auto store. Now, wiring them up is a simple, easy peasy job. I'm going to show you how to do that now. Alright, so here's a very basic but indicative outlay of a traditional starter system, okay? So we have our engine. Right, yeah. And we have inside the car our ignition switch with our key. And we have our starter motor. Okay, and also on the transmission, we have our inhibitor switch. And then we have our battery. Okay. So traditionally, the wiring comes all the way from the battery. There's a nice big permanent cable down to the startup. And then we have from the ignition switch all the way down. And if it's automatic, through the inhibitor, back out again to the solenoid. Now, because the ignition switch is a long way away from the solenoid, and also it's only powered through the fuses of the car so it goes down through the fuse box like this all the way down 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 through the fusible links and into the battery you have all this chance of voltage drop Not being able to pull the solenoid in. Okay. Now with a relay system, this cable still exists. Okay. But instead of pulling in the whole solenoid, we only make it pull in a relay. So we disconnect it here. And this goes to our to our relay, which I'm going to draw big up here. Okay, this is our relay, like this. This cable is going to go to the coil of the relay. Like that. Now this side just goes to ground. which can also be just a you know a ring and can be the mounting point of the relay even if the relay's got a lug on it like this that ring can just go under the lug if you're lazy so that's going to pull the relay in and out so there's very little current okay about a quarter amp or even less to pull in a relay but we still need to pull the solenoid in so what we do this relay gets mounted 
fairly close to the starter, as close as we can. And we use this nice big power cable here that already goes to the starter. We just put an additional ring on the starter there and we feed it with a nice big cable to here and it goes through our points. And then back again to the solenoid. Okay, so now when we pull the relay in by turning the switch, these points close. And because this is really close to the starter motor and solenoid already, and we've got nice big cable going through the points, as soon as those points pull in, we get a much better current to the solenoid. Okay, so although that's very confusing because I've got red and black and blah 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 and it's all written by by hand and I'm, you know, not very good at drawing diagrams, that's the basics of it. So if you watch this back again, you'll be able to follow it better. Okay? But basically, that's how you set out a starter relay. Cool. So I'm going to show you an example of a starter relay. This is the one that's on my Subaru Vortex. Uh, it's a retrofit. So there it is there. It's just a simple um, Bosch style relay. And you'll see here, there how easy it is to connect one. Very simple. So there it is there. Most of them have a wiring diagram either on the top or on the side. So this here is the, um, that shows you the coil and this here shows you the points. So you'll be able to hook it up as per the little drawing that I showed you earlier. And yeah, it's just really, really simple. And that will solve any of your voltage drop issues related to old or insufficient wiring. A very simple way to fix a um, troublesome starter motor or solenoid that won't pull in. So yeah, that's all about starter relays. That's pretty cool, hey? Alright, let's see what we get now. Hey, that's better. Now you and your posse can jump in your car and hit all the hotspots in town. Cool. Thanks guys.